We are now going to welcome Tim Cambich. Tim is a Dayton native with the awesome responsibility of leading the $187 million building program for the Dayton Metro Library. When complete, there will be 17 new, expanded, or completely remodeled libraries in the Dayton area. And tonight, he will talk about one facet of the building program, which is commissioning new, original, local art for each building. Welcome, Tim. Well, welcome to your library. <laughs> Terry Welker's Fractal Rain is only one of over 40 pieces of art commissioned by the Dayton Metro Library for the Libraries for a Smarter Future building program. It's a, re a result of a unique collaboration with the Dayton Art Institute and includes our artists, uh, local artists, architects, and of course the people that use our libraries, most importantly. We call it Reimagining Works. The library had received a million dollar anonymous bequest shortly after the bond issue passed and so we started engaging the public and we built into that process a way by which the public could help select art for it and putting uh, public funds into uh, or private funds into a public good just seemed like the right thing to do. Um, so early in the design process, the architects came up with renderings that allowed artists to imagine the kind of spaces that we would have available for art. And then we created a balloting process so patrons could look at items out of the Dayton Art Institute's collection and vote on their favorites. Artists could use color, they could use technique, materials, anything that inspired them. At our Electra Doran branch, uh, the Stacks and Celebration was the inspiration piece. And uh, the residents really loved how it echoed some of the old factories, like the um, Barney and Smith car company of the uh, 19th and 20th century. And so artist Darren Call took this particular commission and created his six sculptures of Old North Dayton, each depicting an iconic building in Old North Dayton. The panels were cut from uh, sheets of aluminum and were integrated into the design of a terrace uh, fence that we were creating. His proposal was great in that he also incorporated art for young kids to use paper to cut out, to remove materials as a part of that process. Um, we also have, um, as an inspiration for our, north, um, our uh, Northwest branch, uh, elephant mask. Uh, you look at the colors and look at the details of the, of the fabric of that. That was the inspiration to uh, Amy Kohler Anderson for this particular piece there. You can see that in there pretty well. But she also built into the uh, art piece uh, hints to Fairmont High School, which where's the site of the Northwest branch there. So she did a nice job of tying history. And that was one of the things that so many artists did was tying the history of the community of the uh, neighborhoods into their artwork. Uh, our new uh, Lebanon branch, homage to the square on the left and the Japanese footed dish on the right were the inspiration for our new Lebanon branch. And Amy actually won a, a, a commission for that one as well, with a completely different piece. But artists James Michael Kale and uh, Judy Beebe, with the help of 12 students, created this obelisk tones using 12 rectangles uh, to frame glass panels with two or three rondelles in form in our children's room. And it really begs you to come up and touch it. But as you approach, as you get closer, you actually get to see this great view out into the, uh, the uh, areas behind the library there. The, so the, the French uh, oil painting, Dinner at, at the Casino, uh, was an inspiration for our Brookville branch. And uh, uh, pun intended, this, this sparked uh, artist Ron Rollins uh, to create his own fireworks uh, to display across a three panel piece that is in the branch's quiet reading room. And one of the things that Ron said as a part of this piece uh, and others who have worked on this is that this program really forced them to do something different. It forced them to start from a different place and it often took their art in a completely different direction than what they had been used to doing. As, uh, as you can probably see in this next uh, panel here that uh, we have uh, uh, a piece here by uh, Mike Alsas and for our Kettering Moraine branch. And the inspiration piece is on the right. You can definitely see the connection there. I'd never seen any of his works that weren't at least square or rectangular or at least symmetrical uh, for him to use a different shape, even though he was using his same art uh, format was something that was uh, uh, unique and forced him in a different direction there. Uh, Gail Christofferson, this fact, Fractal Edge is a, another piece of art that was created with that same inspiration piece, though she took that certainly in a completely different direction herself. 
um, as we also did at the Kenny Marine Branch, is that we also used this uh, Japanese trunk um, covered with family crests. I don't know if you can see those real well, but uh, Marsha Pippinger took that as an inspiration to create her own crest or her own icons of, uh, of Kettering, uh, luminaries of Kettering, and that's, the, I think, luminaries is the, the name of that particular work there. Now, sometimes it is the art that inspires the architecture, and here you can see the uh, Chihuly piece there that was an inspiration for our Vandalia branch. But you can see how the architect took the art out of this program and helped build that into the design of the building. Um, Mike Richley uh, did that long before we actually built the building. So you see the red, you see the yellow from that Chihuly piece, uh, but you also see how uh, Susan Lay in her uh, picture of the Dayton Air Show, again for the Vandalia branch, she had actually did something really cool. She took photographs of patrons in the libraries. So of course, she got their permission, made certain that they were okay with that, but then and used that for inspiration for the images on there. Um, I could spend an entire presentation just talking about the art in this particular building here. But you have to look at uh, how the various artists have used all three of the inspiration pieces in order to give a, uh, uh, a, uh, a new take on whether it's Monet's uh, water lilies or the various pieces that have multiple, pieces, uh, multiple components to them. In uh, uh, Susan Burns's piece, Andrew Myers, Catherine Cadish, they all took water lilies, but with different materials, from cast rubber to fabric in a sewing machine to monotype painting. Each had their own personal style, their own unique way in which to uh, create their art there. Uh, Paula Krauss, like many, like Ron, they were ones that had such big spaces to fill that they created their art in pieces, and they didn't get to see what the final product would be until it was actually mounted. How about that for extra pressure for an artist? Uh, I want to tell you, though, that uh, we're building world-class libraries here in Dayton. Uh, Reimagining Works has added a unique dimension to this program and added qualities that I couldn't imagine. There are many more amazing artists who have created inspiring art for us to see, but you're going to have to seek them out on your own. We have more libraries to build, and we have more art to create. Explore your libraries and see the world-class art that is yours. Thank you.